And uh, Courtney's going to explain to you, if you're watching on YouTube, this is how you can jump on uh, the Hangout, if you choose to. You can still watch on YouTube, but we're probably, I'm probably going to not do this tonight. But just for, um, I'm not going to do the Bible study tonight, I don't think, unless some people hop on in the next few minutes. Um, so go ahead, uh, Courtney, and ex explain how to jump on this Hangout so we could see you and hear you. Okay, to join the Hangout, um, you would need to uh, log into your Google Plus account uh, and then add Al Jennings to one of your circles. Um, so you can see his uh, feed. Um, and then that's really all that you have to do. You would just have to, um, Al Jennings would have to invite you to the Hangout so that you're able to interact. Okay, thanks, Court. If anybody else is on uh, watching on YouTube, go ahead and um, give us a comment. Let me know that you're there. So thank everybody who's been on since the beginning for your patience. Let's get started. Um, I encourage you to get your Bibles. You can go to Bible.com. Um, Easy to remember. You can go and get a variety of different translations. That's that's U version site, and it's a it's a good good site. Many of you uh, use, or some of you use. Probably everybody that I see on this call right now uses U version. So um, that's U version site. You can get to it by Bible.com. You can. And if you don't have it, <clears throat> those that are, are watching. It's got all kind of translations in different languages. They've got a whole bunch of languages that you can, uh, no matter where you are in the world, it's a good chance that they they, they have your language. Um, okay, I'm reading this note here. Okay, cool. Millie's going to try to get on. Um, well, last time we, we left off in Romans chapter 1 talking about um, the gospel. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. Uh, it's through the gospel that power is released. Paul says... For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now we we gave a lot of background on the book of Romans. The book of Romans were written to Gentiles. Gentiles are non-Jews. Anybody who's not a Jew is a, is a Gentile. And these were Gentiles who had gotten saved. And uh, as Gentiles, they were never obligated uh to keep the law, the law of Moses that was given to the Jews in the Old Testament. But there were some Jews who tried to mix the law and grace. Um, even Jews who were Christians still tried to keep the law. So when these Gentiles got saved, they tried to... Um, tell them and teach them that they had to keep the law of Moses and it confused them and so Paul was having to deal with this um, salvation is by grace it, you you can't mix the law and grace It's either the law or it's grace if you're trying to keep the law as a Christian uh, it's not going to work um, because you can't mix works with grace. And the Bible says that in Ephesians 2.8, by grace you've been saved through faith. Now these Romans became Christians by receiving God's grace. What's God's grace? God's grace is his unmerited 
unearned, undeserved favor. And they have received by faith this grace. But again, these Jews try to confuse them and say, well, yeah, but you have to keep the law. And so Paul was dealing with this in the book of Romans. Um, so Paul used the word in verse 16. We spent quite a bit of time talking about the word gospel. There was a seldom used word in that day. And it's kind of lost its impact now because a lot of people use gospel in a lot of different ways. And some churches talk about gospel. But a lot of churches who talk about the gospel are really not teaching the true gospel. They're teaching a mixture, a mixture of law and grace. Because by by grace, I'm going to let, let me explain that by uh, let me explain grace. In Romans 1.16, let's read this first. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, not works. Not to everyone who works, but to everyone who believes. And I pointed out, and let me give you some scriptures so that you can, we won't go over it again, but um, I think we have some people here for, for the first time, but just jot these verses down. Acts 20:24, 20, uh, and Galatians 1, 6, and 7. And now in Galatians, it, it uses gospel and grace interchangeably. Those words can be used interchangeably because when you preach the gospel, you're preaching grace. Uh, it is referred to in the scripture, the gospel sometimes is re referred to as the, the grace of Christ. Um, the gospel of Christ, the grace of Christ. Paul used those terms interchangeably in Galatians 1, 6, and 7, talking about the same thing. Gospel, the gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ. When you preach the gospel, what it, what is it? It is the grace of Christ. It is totally grace. And the word gospel was seldom used because the word means it, it's over the top good news. Gospel means good news, but it's more than that. It's over the top good news that Jesus paid for your sins and he loves us. He's not mad at us. He, God is not angry with us. All of his anger uh, was placed on Jesus. Jesus, on the cross, was punished for our sins. The wrath of God came on Jesus on the cross for our sins. He died in our place. And that, I'm, I'm explaining what the gospel is. The gospel is this too good to be true, nearly too good to be true. I mean, it's, it's, it's so good that it's, it's over-the-top good news, almost too good to be true news that Jesus paid for our sins, died on our behalf. Um, somebody else is trying to call me. This is Pastor Gary. And uh, let me see what his trouble is. Pastor Gary. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm right in the middle of explaining the gospel. I thought you were trying trying to get on that hangout, man. But you, this here's this is my campus pastor. 
he is he is uh, shopping in the mall while I'm having Bible study. Instead of being on here with me, I'm 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 throwing you under the bus, man. But because you want to get me some tea, uh, uh, I'm gonna forgive you. It's um spiced apple cider, man. Now just get, get whatever you want, man. Whatever you want to do. Let me get back on it. I already, ha I already, um, uh, I got one. I can put it in. Okay, man. Thanks, bye. That's all right, man. The gospel. <laughs> that was awkward. But I couldn't pass up. He wanted to bless me with some tea, man. That's the favor of God. See, that's what the gospel would do. It produces power, so you get favor. So I can tie that in some kind of way, right? All right. So, but that's true, boy. You get get the favor of God. Um, it's it's a free, it's a gift. You don't work for a gift. That the gospel is this over the top good news that God loves us. Not because of us, but in spite of us. While we were sinners, Jesus died for us. We don't do anything to work. We didn't do anything to become a sinner. By one man's disobedience, I think we looked at that before, and we're going to look at it again when, when we get further along in the book of Romans, but by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners. We didn't do anything to... Uh, work for being a sinner. We we were we inherited that from Adam. So by one man's dis disobedience, many were made sinners. By one man's obedience, Jesus, many were made righteous. We didn't work for that. We didn't work for a great. We we didn't work for our salvation. We didn't work for for righteousness. And that's this over the top good news that Paul introduced to them, and it, it was a very seldom. Uh, use word, uh, boy. I get in calls, man, and this this is uh, Raquel calling. I hope you're not having trouble. I hope you can get on. Um, but everybody's trying to send me a video call. Maybe, sometimes people are clicking that button up there, and they're not they're not aware they're sending me a, a video call. But I can't answer the call um, while I um, am on this video hangout. Okay, Paul used this very seldom used word. No, nobody used that word because there was nothing in the world that was good news like this. So that, that, that word, when they heard it, it was like, whoa, whoa. It caught people's attention. Nothing in the world was, was over the top good news like this. There was, there was nothing to compare to this. I mean, there, there, was, there was nothing going on in the world that fit that word. There was nothing that religion was talking about that fit that word. So when Paul used it, it separated him from everybody else and everything else, and everything kind of came to attention. It, he said, um, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, this over-the-top good news that Jesus paid for our sins. And um, that he loves us unconditionally and that he wants to extend his blessings and his favor on us. It's how it's, you know, we, we are going to move on. We are going to get past this verse. But this is really is where I believe the, the book of Romans really begins because it, it is how, I mean, if, if we don't even go any further, if you get a hold of this, that it's not by your performance. That God doesn't bless you. He doesn't heal you. He doesn't prosper you. He doesn't uh, give you victory in your life based on your performance. Some people think, well, if I just pray hard enough, if I just um, 
if I read my Bible enough, if I do enough for God, that's performance. Now, there's nothing wrong with works. Doesn't the Bible say that that um, that, that we should have good work? Yes, but not. Listen, it's very important. Not to earn salvation. We don't work to become a Christian, nor do we work to earn his favor. We're already accepted in the beloved. He already accepted us. As we have, Colossians 2.6 says, as we have received Christ Jesus the Lord, that's how we ought to walk. How do we receive Christ? By grace. So it's not just being born again does grace apply. Grace applies to every area of life. We don't work for salvation in terms of the new birth. Neither do we work for our healing. See, some people think, well, I know why I'm not healed because I haven't read my Bible all week and I know God is really, he must be really upset with me. He told me to go and witness to this person and I haven't done it. That's why That's why I don't have a promotion on the job. That's why, I, I, that's why my prayer doesn't get answered. That's why my financial need is not met because I really have been disobedient to God. I haven't been doing what he instructed me to do. Or I haven't, I haven't been to church like I should. What you're trying to do is you're trying to work and earn his blessings. You can't earn it. He doesn't answer your prayers based on your goodness. <laughs> he answers your prayers based on his goodness. Man, that's good stuff. It really is. It's, it's, it's good stuff. And it's, so when, when we understand that, Paul said, this, this gospel, I'm not ashamed. Now, that, that separated him when he introduced that word. He's talking about something nobody else is talking about. And still today when we mention gospel see then they knew because that word wasn't used in our day and it's really the same thing going on people mix in law and grace but it loses its impact in our day because right now when we say gospel somebody might think yeah 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 Gospel, yeah, yes. Yeah, everybody preaches the gospel. Every church preaches the gospel, but every church doesn't preach the gospel. Not not the gospel of the Bible. This over the top, almost too good to be true news. God is not angry with us. There's nothing you can do. John seventeen twenty three says that God loves us as much as he loves Jesus. <laughs> Man, that, and that, that that that's that's crazy. That's what we could call stupid good news. I mean, loves me as much as he loves Jesus. He's not angry with me. There's, there's nothing that you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make him love you less. He is um he you, you totally cool to God. I mean, you're accepted. So when you know that and you know who you are, you'll never try to be a, a, a people pleaser when you really understand the love that God has for you because you know that, hey, God accepts me, so you're going to have to deal with me. If you don't, hey, that's your issue. I'm, I am cool. I'm cool. With, I'm cool with God is cool with me. And then when you understand that, you'll not only understand that if God says I'm cool, I'm cool. And if God's not tripping with me, then I'm not going to trip with you. 
if, if, if you're angry, if you walk around angry and bitter, and even if you come against me, and we all have enemies and people that come against us and so forth, I'm not tripping with them because I know that they just, they're tripping because they really don't understand how much God loves them. People that walk around angry and always bitter about something, always complaining, they really don't understand the love that God has for them. God loves you so much. Okay? So that catches everybody up. We're going to go a little bit further, and then um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll move off of this. But it goes right into the 17th verse, which is very, very powerful. Um, so Paul says, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Um, let, let me just hit on salvation for a moment that we talked about last week. Salvation means to save, deliver, protect, heal. Um, it it is it's more than a new birth. That word salvation, that's another word that has been watered down, just like gospel has been watered down. But um, it means deliverance, preservation, healing, safety, soundness, prosperity, everything that Jesus died to give us, that's salvation. Financial prosperity is salvation. See, healing is salvation. There, here's here's a reference for that. This this will show you that salvation means more than um, it covers more than the, the new birth. In uh, John, excuse me, James. 5.14, if, if any is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And what that word save in that context means heal the sick. So what that means is the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Okay, so... Salvation is an all-inclusive word. It includes everything that Jesus died to give us. It's total salvation. It's, it's total prosperity. So it is the gospel, which is the grace of God, the grace of Christ, God's unmerited favor when the gospel is preached it releases the power power to heal you power to give you favor and when you walk in this <laughs> boy supernatural things happen just I was in recently I'll give you a testimony I was in Canada for uh, Joel Osteen's Night of Hope I got a ticket I was parked on the street. I didn't, I didn't know, but I was supposed to get get some kind of pay for a ticket somewhere. Probably they had some station. I didn't know about it because I'm not from Toronto. And but ignorance of the law is no excuse. Okay, and we're not as Christians. We don't. We're not under the law of Moses, but we're under the law of man, and uh, the law said. I needed to get a ticket, or the law gave me a ticket because I violated the law. So um, I was supposed to get pay for some kind of uh, at some station, and then take a receipt and put it in my wind in, in my windshield or on my windshield. So I got back to the car. Long story short, I, I found out. I drove somewhere and then I looked at it and I said, oh, wait a minute. I thought it might have been a, a ticket for parking at the hotel, but no, I looked at it. No, I got a ticket. So the next day I went to pay for the ticket. I went on the website because I didn't want to leave Canada and then have some bill and have interest accrued to me. So I got online. And when I tried to pay it, it said that my ticket was already paid for. I'm like, what? Then I called to verify because I want to make sure because I don't, I don't want to have any misunderstandings and have them try to come after me later. 
So I called them and they said that no, the um, ticket's been taken care of. I said, what do you mean? And they said the officer um, just um, basically tore it up. He voided the ticket. That's favor. See, and I thank God for stuff like that. I mean, that seems like a very small thing, but God does stuff like that to me all the time. And that's supernatural. The same, look, look, think about that for a minute. You say, well, maybe he gave you a break because he saw that. Uh, see, a lot of times people try to try to figure out you know, why it happened in the natural, try to give some kind of natural reason for something that's supernatural. There's no doubt in my mind that was supernatural. Some people think, well, you know, yeah, he saw you had a United States license plate, and that's why he gave you a break. He saw that when he wrote wrote the ticket because he had to put the plate down, he had to put the plate number down, and then he wrote the ticket. But something came on this guy after he wrote that ticket. Then he, he the same guy that wrote the ticket tore it up. Now, how do you explain that? That's the gospel. Because power is released when you understand it and you start walking in this and you you have to renew your mind to it. You have to walk throughout your day, no matter what you're doing, and be spiritually minded. And what does that mean? When you're spiritually minded, boy, wait till we get into this. Uh, Romans chapter 8. We're not going to cover every single chapter in Romans, but we'll at least go through chapter 8. And in chapter 8, it talks about being spiritually minded is life and peace. And to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded means to be flesh ruled, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you're spiritually minded, that means you're focused on spiritual things. I mean, you, you're walking in the spirit. You're focused on spiritual things. When, when I mean, you, you have a, there's a consciousness that um, God is in you. You're walking with God. No matter what I'm doing, I know that God is with me. It's my lifestyle. And when you live that lifestyle, when your focus is not on worldly things, not that you can't do things in this world. We all do those things. But your focus is on spiritual things. You're not going to do anything that violates the word because uh, not on purpose. None of us are perfect, but but we're gonna um, do our best. We're gonna be our best every day. To um, we set out to um, walk according to the Word of God, not to earn God's acceptance, but out of the love that we have for God, and, and we want to um, to uh, walk in a way that that. Uh, God wants us to walk. We want to obey God because we love Him so much, and that's why we do do good work. It's not to earn His favor. And when you when you do that, and you're conscious that God loves you, and that power is released through the gospel, through understanding the gospel of grace. When you understand it power is released into your life you begin to expect things you expect favor you expect to be blessed some people walk around even though they go to church every week but they don't expect to be blessed they don't expect increase they don't expect favor uh, they don't expect to be healed see but well, when you understand that the, it, it is the gospel is the the power of God. Now, Pastor Gary is really messing with me now. Now he's giving me a video call. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait till I deal with him. Twice he tried to interrupt me. No, but the the gospel. Y'all get it? It's the it is the power. Of God, I, I hope you all are really getting this. This this will change. This will change your life. And none of us have got it all. I mean, have a, a a full understanding of all of this. I certainly don't. Um, Paul said, 
um, I've not yet apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. I'm reaching forward. I, I haven't arrived yet, but I have left. <laughs> okay, I've, And let that be your attitude. I haven't arrived yet, but I've left. And just continue to renew your mind. And I encourage you to, um, I'm going to wrap this up, but just uh, we'll pick up and go into verse 17 and, and some really cool stuff that I got on the plate for you uh, next time. But um, let that be your meditation. Just think about, meditate on the gospel of grace. It is the power of God. It is, it, and it's through grace, through the gospel of grace, that power is released into your life for everything that Jesus died on the cross to give you. I mean, you, you, you've got all, all, all the power, power you need. You know what? I'm just going to turn this phone off. <laughs> Golly. Woo! Okay. Power is, is released through the gospel. For anything you need, what do you need from God? I want to pray for you right now. Father God, I, I want to just thank you right now for the gospel. Thank you for grace. And I thank you that through the gospel, your power is released. Lord, help us to get a better understanding of the gospel of grace. We thank you, Lord, that you love us, not because of us, but in spite of us, that we don't deserve your blessings. But because that you sent Jesus on the cross, we get what we, we don't get what we deserve. We get what we don't deserve on the basis of the cross. And it's through that over-the-top good news and through understanding that you favor us. It's not based on our works, but it's by your unmerited favor. As we understand that, Lord God, power is released into, your, in, into our lives. And Father, I thank you for each and every person who's watching this right now, those who will, will watch the replay of this, Lord, I just thank you for your favor on, on their lives. I speak favor, blessing, and increase. We receive by faith your blessings on our life. Thank you that we're seated together in heavenly places. When you see us, you see Jesus, because as he is, so are we in this world. Thank you for giving us a clearer, better, greater understanding of your grace, of your unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor on our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And um, we'll get a hold of this uh, Google Hangout thing. And I'm going to learn to shut everything else off and not be distracted so much. But uh, I'm, I'm in the beginning just helping people, helping people get on as, as much as I can. Um, I know that it's just really... Uh, it, it gets confusing. It's even for me. I, I'm trying to. It throws me off sometimes. But thanks. Oh, next week we're moving. To, we're moving to Thursday. And it just works out better for me. I, I hope that's um, cool with everybody else. Um, but um, uh, since y'all are my um, prime time players, hey, Michelle's Thursday work for you. Oh yeah, Thursday is fine. Okay, Thursday's Thurs good. All right, cool. All right, all right. Um, so thank y'all. 
Y'all have a good night. Good night. God bless. All right.